The oldest images of the Great Mother date back 30,000 years, well before the birth of the great civilizations of the past. Like the square, the triangle, and the circle, the idea of the Great Mother, a mother of all and for all, has always been there. This idea has been researched by great seekers such as Eric Neumann, who was a follower of the psychologist and philosopher Gustav Jung. Now we will see some images of the Great Mother, ancient and more recent, that can be found in different parts of the world. From Sardinia to Mesopotamia, this is the goddess Hittita Arena from the 14th century AD with an impressive radiance above her head and her child in her arms. To China, Kuan Yin, the incarnation of compassion, who is known as she who weeps for the world. To South America, to Africa. Certainly in India, the idea of the Great Mother has remained a constant throughout time with many variants. This is Sri Lakshmi, the mother who protects our evolution. Sri Saraswati, the mother who gives knowledge, music and the arts to her devotees. Sri Durga, the mother who rides on a tiger. With a serene smile, she is powerful, wielding her weapons to defend her children against the negative forces. Moving to the Mediterranean Basin, it's in the Greece of the 7th century BC that we find this amphora dedicated to the protectress of animals. She's closely connected to the sea from where we all originate. Her face seems to be shaped as a heart. On either side are two dragons with their spiral tails and above them are two birds. All around is a symbol that became abhorrent after being used by the Nazis, but here it has its original significance the benevolent radiance of the sun that flows to all four corners of the earth. In ancient Egypt, the cult of the mother Isidé was born. Mother of all, the goddess of motherhood, of fertility, of magic, of healing and of nature. She too has an impressive symbol on her head. The cult of Isidé spread throughout the entire Mediterranean basin particularly after the Roman conquest, and it remained for a long time through all the Roman Empire. Many of the temples dedicated to her, these images are from Pompeii, like the Lady of Fowl, the Lady of Bread, later became sanctuaries dedicated to the Madonna of Fowl, to the Madonna of Bread. But divine characteristics were not attributed to Mary. The problem of her identity, and it was a problem, plagued Catholicism throughout its entire history until 1854. This is when the Church proclaimed the dogma, an unchallengeable affirmation, of her Immaculate Conception. This meant that she was a human being, but conceived without original sin. Returning to the Greek-Roman era, there are many images like this. They represent the Great Mother, mother of all, with numerous breasts to feed all of her children. In the ancient Greek legend, recounting the birth of Athena, maybe it's the automatic male perspective that sees her born from the head of Zeus, Athena with a helmet on her head, who defends the hero and the artisan and all women, the goddess of healing, of knowledge and of art. This is mother of the morning, of the dawn of the new day, called Mother Matuta, and is part of a collection of statues dating from the 6th to 2nd century BC in the Archaeological Museum of Capua. This is an ancient Italica divinity with a noticeable hairstyle, the generator and protector of things and of men. Near in time and place, here is a Celtic mother goddess from the 2nd century AD with many spirals on her head. Around the same period, in the Byzantium area, near where Jesus was born and lived, the religious devoutness produced images like this where Mary maintained a central role 
for the followers of Jesus after the resurrection, so that in this Pentecost some apostles have their backs to us, while Mary is in a direct vertical line with the Dove, the Holy Spirit. Later we have painters such as El Greco, who replicate this vision. This and other similar images testify to the unbroken continuity of the idea of the Great Mother. This image is in the Church of the Holy Mary of Grace in Arezzo from the end of the 1300s. Almost a hundred years later, Piero della Francesca realized in this way the commission received from the Confraternity of Mercy. He had already painted one of the most significant frescoes in the history of painting. This Madonna del Parto, that was generally disliked by the Catholic hierarchy because it was too real, too self-aware, too earthly and therefore scandalous. It is worth focusing on the halos of the three people depicted. Instead of the conventional gold-circled halo, Piero has gone back to the origin of the aura as an energy. It's like a pulsating lens that reflects the rectangles of the tent differently according to the heights of the people. The next images were also considered scandalous, like this inlaid wooden statue of the Vergine Orante. It is she who holds one of the divine attributes, the sphere of totality and it is she who, within herself, contains all the history of the spirit. She contains and generates everything. She protects her devotees from all type of evil. Images like this were nearly all destroyed, burned or discarded. We have already mentioned Sri Durga, the Great Mother. This is a powerful image, almost Baroque, of the one who protects her children to the point of violence against the demons that torment them. Here is the same idea expressed in the classical Italian style of the 15th century in this Santa Maria del Socorso in the Church of the Holy Spirit in Florence. While we seek refuge under her cape from the horrible devil that wants to capture us, she raises a club ready to beat him. Also, the research in alchemy of the 16th century recognized the role of the woman, the queen, the mother of all and everything. This is the spiritual vase of alchemy, a man on the right and a woman on the left. Crowned because they are noble, and noble because they have the knowledge, from the ancient root no, to know, they manifest the feminine and masculine qualities of the left and right channels of our sympathetic nervous system. These channels are drawn as two serpents, as in the caduceus of Mercury. They are twined around a central axis, which is the parasympathetic channel of the autonomous nervous system. And this is what the lady, the queen, the empress on the top of the pillar is holding, mirroring and repeating the entire process. On the left of the steps of the church dedicated to the Great Mother of God, built in Turin in 1831, is the striking figure of Mary. She holds the Book of Knowledge in her right hand, and in her left she holds the Chalice of Essence, which is the primordial energy. That primordial spiral energy that is the origin of everything, Mother of all, that is contained in the Mother Earth. Moving galaxies, can be found written in the great book of nature. It is said to rest in a dormant state in the triangular bone, for this reason called sacrum. Ready to rise from the top of the head and it can be felt as a cool breeze. Sometimes, who knows why, it's also visible. We have just left the 20th century, a century that witnessed the arrival of the mass on the stage of history mass revolution, mass production and consumerism, sport for the masses, mass communication, and also the century that saw the diffusion on a mass level 
of that inner process which is called self-realization. It's about the conscious perception of the energy that is the mother of all on a mass scale, thanks to the loving, unceasing and selfless work of Sri Mataji Nirmala Devi. <laughs> 